Welcome back to another installment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the black-fronted dotterel, small and dainty birds that have recently arrived in New Zealand. I hope you enjoy. Black-fronted dotterels, as well as being small, as mentioned, around 16 through 18 centimetres long and weighing about 30 through 35 grams, also have very striking plumage markings, with adults having prominent black bands on the breast and hairs, which contrast sharply with their otherwise white plumage. Their red bills and orbital eye rings also stand out, with them dorsally being a mussel's brown colour, the same with their wings and the crown of their heads, a coloration that is particularly useful in camouflage against aerial predators, especially considering their preferred habitats of shingle and stony riverbeds. They are smaller and more slenderly built than banded dotterels, and interestingly, unlike many other wading birds, they retain the same plumage all year round, with them also being monotypic, meaning that they are the only member of their genus, being the LC Ornis. Regarding their feeding, birds consume a wide variety of invertebrates and the occasional plants, with them utilising an interesting strategy of capturing prey. Birds will tap their bills on substrates before then picking up their prey, which increases their capture rate. The reason this is effective is that by tapping on said surfaces, the vibrations from said tapping causes their prey to either fly off or jump, making them more visible for their dotterels. The time in the day they spend feeding has also been documented, with daily time budgets showing that birds were feeding for 38% of the day while incubating, 69% while tending to chicks, and 86% during a winter's day. It was also estimated that during the latter, a bird could catch up to 28,737 insects, catching one roughly every 1.5 seconds. Birds are usually solitary, although they will group up in pairs or groups of up to 4 to 5 birds. They nest between August and March, peaking between September and December. They nest in major open areas, usually not far from freshwater, with the nest itself being a depression in the ground that is mostly unlined or surrounded by a few twigs, stones or grass. Both parents will then share in the incubation of the two to three pale white eggs with dark spots for around 22 to 26 days. During incubation, if the eggs get too hot, the adults will stand over them to shade them from the harsh sun, and will even wet the feathers on their stomachs to wet and cool the eggs. The young, once hatched, leave the nest to hide in less exposed areas, with the parents continuing to look after them. Their speckled grey and white feathering also allows them to remain well camouflaged as well. Birds are widespread in Australia, where they originated, and only colonised New Zealand recently, that's being in the 1950s, with the first nest being found in Hawke's Bay in 1962. Now considered native, they are found mainly in lowland eastern regions from Auckland to Southland, and are probably still expanding, especially into more western localities. The main threat to them is during breeding, with nests and chicks being especially vulnerable where nests are placed close to roads, tracks or livestock, or at risk from predators, including cats and stoats. With a population of about 3,000, they are classified as naturally uncommon, although the population appears to be increasing. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Scarlet Duck, one of eight species of waterfowl that became extinct following Polynesian arrival, with their nearest relatives being the pink-eared ducks of Australia. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.